Well, as I was thinking of what I could say to you tonight that, that might be helpful to you, I came across a statistic. And there was a poll done that showed 78% of the population thinks that the moral values of our country are getting worse. And I think America needs a national healing. But we need healing in our schools, in our government. But we really need healing in our lives, our minds, our bodies, our families. And luckily God gave us and still gives us a way that we can ask for healing. About 3,000 years ago, God made a promise to King Solomon. And it's a promise that stands today because it's a promise made to all of his people. In 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. And with every promise in the Bible, there's a premise. There are conditions that need to be met in order for the promise to be fulfilled. There are strings, certainly, attached. And there are four strings attached to this promise. Very simple. One, it said, shall humble themselves, which means you admit that you're not in control. If you want healing in your life, you have to be humble. The Bible never asks us or tells us to pray for humility, but it does say humble yourselves over and over again. Asking God to humble you is not a prayer that I would recommend you pray because he will answer it. And it will not be very pleasant. And I would say life is a way of humbling us all. So admit that you're not in control. The second thing that this promise tells us that we have to do in order to get healing from God is to pray. Ask God for help. It's that simple. Over 20 times in the New Testament, it's commanded for us to ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. That should give you some confidence. God wants us to ask. And I was thinking, why does God want us to ask for so much stuff in prayer? Because I think it's the only way that you'll learn how to trust Him. It's like a parent and a child. The more the child asks for something, when he's hungry, or he needs love and attention, and the parent gives it to the child, the more the child trusts the parent. And if you're not asking God for anything, you're certainly not trusting Him. The third thing that this promise says is to seek my face. Seek God, not a miracle. It's okay to want healing and prosperity or a thousand other gifts, but you just say, God, I want you. Whether I get the answer or not, I want to know you. Hebrews 11.6 says God rewards those who earnestly seek him. And I believe that. More than anything else, God wants you to seek him. And it takes time. It takes investment. Any gift, any hobby, any talent that somebody has, they had to spend the time investing in order to get good at it. And it's the same way with seeking God. And the fourth thing that this wonderful promise says is to turn from their wicked ways. You just turn your attention from the world to the word. Now, many people think of really evil stuff, terrorism and shootings and death and destruction when they think of the word wicked. But what really is wickedness in the Bible? And it really is just forgetting God. It's that simple. That's what wickedness means. And when we forget God, we do all kinds of weird and different stuff. And when society forgets God, 
I just turn on the news and you see exactly what happens. Isaiah 17 10 says, You have forgotten the God that saved you, and you have not remembered that God is your place of safety. So I ask, where is your place of safety? God is saying you're forgetting that he's the ultimate security in life, not your bank account, not your husband or wife, not anything else that you hold dear. So remember these four conditions when you want to ask for healing. You humble yourself, you admit you're not in control. It says to pray, ask God for help. Seek my face, seek God, not a miracle. And turn from your wicked ways. Turn your attention, don't forget God. And know that this is a promise that was given by God to the people of God, and it still holds true today.
Have you accepted Christ? If you have, you are a person of God. You're his people if you know the Lord. And he has given us a symbolic gesture we perform each week to remember him and to remember our heritage as people of God through communion. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Pray with me. Father, we thank you to be called the people of God. We pray for healing and restoration, but most of all, we just seek you and want more of you. Fill this country, fill our schools, fill our lives, fill our souls with your transformative love and grace. And in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.